we're going to talk about inferior SE. We're going to do it because, yeah, I, it's just been really relevant and it's been on my mind and it's caused a lot of consequences in the last week for me. It's just been like, hey, David, welcome to this next week. We're going to experience inferior SE and you're going to love it and you're going to hate it. But that's all you're going to experience. Uh, this last week, I was doing a big project for a client of mine, and it's design work, in, like electrical design work, and whenever I get to the end of a project, all of the details need to come together. And when that moment happens, something different happens in my head. It's like the whole time I've been designing, it's awesome. It's like there's all these details and I love them. I love, you know, specking out how things should be and what the parts should be and you know, where we're going to get them and how they're going to be combined and, you know, making it elegant. And then it gets to the very end where everything kind of has to be finalized and I just start, like, running in circles and burning all of my energy into like tiny little places of detail and I don't know how to not do that because if I don't not if I don't do that then I will miss things and I know I will miss things um, and that they will sabotage all the work that I have done previously and this is just exhausting for me to pay attention to all those details um, I've noticed this, other people I've worked with have noticed this, and uh, Hillary's noticed this, and, you know, in other, in other ways that Inferior SE shows, it's hilarious. This one's not. <laughs> it's very, uh, very painful for me. Uh, but also, on the flip side of that, uh, I feel that whenever... I have an experience which is very SE related, um, where something is very refined in the experience or the craftsmanship of the way that it's done. It's very overwhelming and can actually put me into a very, very weird spot that I wouldn't consider um, from just the MBTI functional uh, arrangement of INFJs, it, it does not put me where I think it would put me. Uh, I would think that if I have an SE experience, it would put me into NI. Like, you know, I'm having this wonderful experience, now I'm just going to, like, go into my head and zone out. And that happens, but it happens a lot. But what doesn't, what happens sometimes is if it's particularly resonant with me, it puts me into something that I can only guess is F-I, um, which is not what I would expect. But it's almost like I suddenly feel such an extreme resonance with something that I fear I may explode. Um, and it just kind of screams um, internally, it feels like uh, the most intense thing I could ever experience uh, emotionally, but it's kind of torturous. Um, and it's certainly not NI, because NI is kind of a neutral experience. Um, it's just kind of, you know, fun to be in and uh, not doesn't feel weird. Uh, but this state is very melancholy. Uh, I become kind of like a, you know, like a depressed 14-year-old emo version of myself. Uh, I get quite prone to wanting to go do something artistic, go write music or something. And it seems to be the only way that I can kind of get out of that uh, or do something useful with it. I had coffee with one of my INTJ uh, friends tonight, and he 
experiences the same thing. And that doesn't surprise me because, you know, INTJs have FI and it's, you, it's actually pretty strong, which is really weird um, for how they want to appear externally. They kind of have really strong F FI when they want to. Uh, or actually, sorry, when they don't want to. But, um, yeah, so it just puts me in a place I wouldn't ever have expected. I'm kind of curious to see what other INFJs' experiences of that are, and if uh, there might be some explanation for this. I mean, like, you know, MBTI is a model. It's just a model, but... You know, it'd be kind of nice if there was some uh, reason why that might skip down to function number six uh, instead of just going into, like, hey, fantastic SE experience going to uh, inspire the NI to do something phenomenal. Like, there's kind of that, but it just gets kind of dark for me. Um, but the weird thing is, is it feels like it feels like good depression, if there is a such thing. It's like not not depression, like uh, clinical depression or something that gets into the way of everyday life. It's like a it's like a teething. You're trying to like just uh, I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> You're just trying to like um, I don't know. It's just really really intense. And I don't really know what to do about it. And then I feel extremely vulnerable during those times. Like, not not for, like, making a video like this, but for just, uh, I kind of just need to be, like, alone. Um, because being in reality reminds me even more deeply that the reality I want to experience will never be. Uh, and then it kind of undermines, it like breaks the fourth wall of my uh, play that's going in my head. It's almost like somebody, you know, I'm watching this fantastic movie and, or like a play and uh, reality is the character that gets up on stage and makes everybody break character and you realize that it was all kind of an illusion anyway, and that it really isn't what you think it is. Those characters don't exist, they're just regular people, and it's kind of disappointing. Uh, as a metaphor, that's kind of how I feel NI goes, and then gets broken or spurred on by SE experiences. Like, it can either be a reminder that things could be a different way, uh, like, in a disappointing way, the SE experience, or it can be a, like, a fuel of, like, that was so fantastic, it could probably also be this thing. Um, yeah, I don't know what the hell the purpose of this video was, I just figured it might be worth, uh, uh, posting while I've got this mood. I can pull from. So, uh, yeah, what's your experience and what do you do about it?